today we are going to share on living, living a meaningful life with true learning. Yeah. True learning. Learning, you see all the, all the happy faces there? They are learning together. Learning in a very um, spiritual way and can see that they are enjoying themselves with a good cause. Right or not? So today, it's my pleasure and my honour also to be able to share from Mangala Sutta how we can live a meaningful life through learning. Yeah, just to recap, what are the five practices, the daily practices that we, can, uh, we, we do during this Gimana period? Of course, every day also we do. But because this period is we take aspiration to do it with more diligence and um, more spiritually. So the first one, morning chanting and making noble aspiration. Do you all do your morning chanting or not before you come today? Yeah, Sister Paru sure got one. Very diligent, yeah. yeah. So morning chanting actually helps us to calm out our, calm our mind and uh, for us, right, to move on our day with a very calm mind and very mindful, uh, very mindfully. And also we make our noble aspiration. What is our noble aspiration? Every one of you will have different, but the ultimate one will be the ultimate happiness. So maybe, maybe for us, I mean for me, lah, uh, maybe for, uh, for me, I aspire uh, firstly to, to, to have a more spiritual life, to live more spiritual life, learn the Dharma, live more spiritually. And also the next one is family, so that I can share this with family, my family, and spread it out to whoever that I can uh, share with, yeah. So for meditation, it cultivates calmness and mental clarity. When we have mental clarity, a lot of times right, we can discern things, what is right, what is wrong, easily. Yeah, I say, oh, this is not right. This is, if I do this, meaning this is increasing my anger. So, oh, by reflecting it, then straight away, you say, oh, I don't do it. So with this cultivate, cultivated mind, then we can we are able to tell ourselves, yeah. listen to talks and reading Dharma books. So this is also a good cultivation, uh, learning more Dharma, learning more ways to have a, a, good culti a good cultivation, increase our knowledge, how we can do it and why we do it, yeah, understanding. Then perform acts of generosity, kindness and compassion. This is very good for us also. Dana, sila, bhavana. Yeah? So we increase our um, generosity, our kindness and compassion. And evening chanting. After in evening chanting, we reflect. What have I done for today? Uh, has, it, has it helped me to improve? Have, uh, has it helped me to go towards my path? Uh, does that, the, do I achieve my aspiration today? Going nearer and nearer for my aspiration. So these are the five. So during this period, we still have three more weeks to go. So during this period, we continue to do that. Yeah. <clears throat> Just uh, uh, this one is a, a special tribute for this wonderful lady. Mother Mangala is so, her name, also, it so happened Mangala. Since we are doing, we are sharing on Mangala Sutta. This lady, she is she, she just uh, reached age ninety-seven two days ago. Yesterday, yesterday. So, throughout her life, she has been uh, sharing her love, her kindness, her compassion to those underprivileged. Except for seventy, seventy years for 70 years, just sharing her loving kindness, her compassion to help people, especially the young ones, the orphans. Have you all heard of this Pure Life Society? If those staying in Puchong, 
every time if you pass by the old Pujong Road, yeah, you will pass by or you will see on the left hand side if towards Pujong. Yeah. So I always when I whenever I pass by, I I somehow I have this this uh, sense that mm, whoever that set up this school, yeah, this school, he have helped a lot of children. Because every time I pass by, it so happens it's busy period, school, uh, they are retu either returning from school or going to school. Then I can see the vans, you know, a lot of vans and their buses, uh, small buses, right, carrying their children, fetching their children, either to school or coming back. So I always admire, but I didn't know that she is, I mean, this uh, founder, uh, she was so, uh, so many years in this already. Yeah, she is really a beacon of light that was shared by his uh, people, uh, her people, a beacon of light, a guiding force, and a true embodiment of compassion throughout her life. So Mother Mangala's light may have dimmed, but the flame she ignited will forever burn bright for others. And may her noble soul find eternal peace. So we wish her have a good rebirth to wherever she is. Yeah? So she is called also Mother Teresa of Malaysia. Rarely people know about this, but we know the, the original Mother Teresa. But we also have one Mother Teresa in Malaysia. So we, we, we pay our tribute to her. Yeah? So why I share this? Because of her kindness and compassion. So it's something for us to emulate as, as well. Of course, Different people will have different level for contribution, but little, little, uh, we share whatever that we can. Yeah. Okay, so today, let us continue our session on living a meaningful life the, from the discourse Mangala Sutta. And today I will share for true learning, how learning can help us to live a meaningful life. So today I will share on two verse, two verses, verse four and verse nine, the highlighted one. So to, uh, today, okay, Bahun Sacha Cha Sipancha Binayo Cha Susi Kito Suba Sita Cha Yawacha Etang Mangala Muttamang Vast Learning Perfect Handicraft a highly trained discipline and pleasant speech. This is blessing supreme. So since today we are talking about learning, yeah, true learning. So we will focus on bahun sacha cha sipan cha. Okay. So let us. Okay, and the second verse will be verse nine. Kanti cha suwa cha sata samanan samananan cha dasanang. Kalena Dhamma Sakaja Etang Mangala Muttamang. First one, Kanti is patience. So we will share on the second one, Suwacha Sata. Okay. And Samana Nanja Dasanang Kalena Dhamma Sakaja, which is being easy to advise. If we learn, we are easy to advise, then it will be easier for, for us to absorb and uh, uh, learn much. So, sight of the Samanas, holy man, and timely discussion of the Dhamma. Okay. So, let's go on. Verse 4. Bahu, bahu Sachanja Sipanja. Vast learning. So, vast learning in what? Say, talking about our worldly life, our daily life. All of us, uh, I would say all of us, we have, we have um, our living. Yeah? We earn our living through ways. Yeah? Some are lecturer, yeah? some are lecturer here, some are lawyer, some are property expert, yeah? accountant, yeah? accountant, but the tax expert. So all of us have our expertise in our living, earning a living. So what we do, we need to learn first, right? In the first place, we need to go study until from five, then we proceed what we, our interest is. And uh, we congratulate all those students, right, who have just got their results for SPM. Yeah, congratulations, and they have achieved. Yeah? And from there, they proceed. We proceed on. What is our interest? If lawyer, then we go 
we study lawyer, we study accountancy, we study uh, chemistry, we study bio, according to our interest. And then we proceed on to our work because of the skills that we acquire. So we are, ex we are specialized. Uh, we specialize in our field of work through learning. We need to learn first, even as a normal people, uh, uh, worldly people, we need to learn. And we work for it. We work hard for it. Learning through, uh, from university is one thing. But as we come out in the working world, you have a practical learning. So we learn also, right? You need to learn first, right? Practical. And slowly, slowly, gradually, we, we are expert. Huh? We, are special, we specialize in our area and we are more proficient. Okay? Likewise, here we are talking about spiritual learning. Since our goal is on um, uh, this uh, uh, Buddha, uh, Buddha's uh, advice, Buddha's teaching of um, liberation. So on this vast learning, what do we learn? Another word for vast learning is Bahu Sutta. Buddha is, a, is one who is Bahu Sutta. He learned a lot and he knows a lot. He has all, all ways of knowledge. Huh? During the Buddha's time, we don't have written records. We only learn, they, they, they learn through oral tradition during the Buddha's time. So whatever they learn, whatever they listen, now whatever they listen, they actually re remember it, re recite it internally, memorize it, and then they put to practice. It's so oral tradition. Great learning through hearing, yeah? through hearing for Dharma teaching. Most people, a lot of them, they learn from the Buddha or the Buddha's um, disciples. Through, through listening, through listening, and then they practice. So what they learn? They learn the Dhamma, okay? And from learning, so they get the advice, huh? they listen to the Buddha and the disciples, they follow the advice. So they restrain unwholesome speech, thoughts, and actions. And they promote the skillful. They, they do, huh? they perform the wholesome speech, thoughts, and action. Just that is from their learning side. And for handicraft, likewise, like what I just now shared, the skill in our work, whether is it a, a profession or whether is it handy. Some may be working on, yeah, on the handicraft, making baskets using bamboo, right? Or even making, making of uh, clocks, all this is handy. Of course, they need the knowledge first. Then only they need to know how to make it. Uh, even the flooring. Also, someone, uh, someone with the skill, someone learn it and do it. So every bit, uh, if you just look around, all is true, special, as uh, perfect handicraft, perfect skill. Right? They need to learn it from there. So likewise, this is the advice of the Buddha. To live a, to live a meaningful life, that means uh, we have the knowledge. We learn the knowledge. We learn the knowledge first, and uh, whether is it for a living, or whether is it for hobby. But whatever that we do, right, is wholesome. Those that we know is unwholesome, then we don't do. Say example, uh, something that if we do, uh, example fishing, uh, fishing, fishing rod. Actually, those uh, fishing rod, yes, is a handicraft, but it leads to killing. So this is unwholesome. So for handicraft, for any uh, skills also, we base on the Buddha's advice of right livelihood. That means we don't, we don't harm. Whatever we do, we don't, we don't lead. Huh? It doesn't lead to killing. It doesn't, uh, um, it's poison or, or harming anybody, right? where human is concerned, or even creatures are concerned, animals are concerned. So that is avoiding, uh, avoiding. So we perform the wholesome one. So whatever we do is leading to non-harmful. That is our intention. 
right intention in the second factor of the Noble Eightfold Path. Non-harmful, whatever we learn is non-harmful and neither cruelty. And it accordance uh, to precepts. The five precepts, uh, we abstain from killing living beings, we abstain from taking things not given, stealing, right? Um, and the um, sexual misconduct, uh, wrong speech, uh, false speech, and also uh, consum consumption of liquor, liquor or drinks that causes intoxication. So in accordance to the precepts. So what do we learn? In this sutta, Salayaka Sutta, Majima Nikaya 41, the um, Brahma actually asked the Buddha, he said, we are, last time, last time uh, in the, during the Buddha's time, a lot of people will come and visit Buddha and get his advice, including the Brahma. The Brahma, they, they are, you know, in the caste itself, right, they are on the higher end, yeah, higher, higher level. So they always come and get advice from the Buddha. So they asked the Buddha, I said, on the, they are rich, yeah? they have a trade, they, they, are, they are merchants, yeah? they are rich, they have family. So on the, on the dissolution of the body, okay, after death, how can they be happy? That means they don't fall into the unhappy destiny or in hell. That means to have a happy rebirth. Happy, born in a happy widow. Now, happy in future, after death, also happy. Then the Buddha gave them the advice. He said, firstly, we avoid the unwholesome states of the unwholesome bodily conduct, the four unwholesome verbal conduct, and the three unwholesome mental conduct. By doing so, we are actually lessened, uh, reducing our greed, hatred and delusion because greed, hatred and delusion, they are the roots for our action, whether is it through speech, thoughts or action. So the Buddha actually advised them and then he said, conduct not in accordance with the Dharma. Now this is Buddha's um, from the Sutta. Huh? He said, conduct that is not in accordance to the Dharma, unrighteous conduct on dissolution of the body after death, reappears in states of deprivation, unhappy destiny, in perdition, and even in hell, in the very, very suffering uh, realm. Okay, so by avoiding this, then you won't look, you, you no need to go to this. That is advice uh, from the Buddha. Okay. okay, so just a rough, uh, just a, a quick summary. The 10 unwholesome actions, the three bodily, the three bodily, the, it's actually from the five precepts, right? Killing of, uh, avoiding the killing of beings, taking things not given, sexual misconduct and the verbal side, besides false speech, harsh speech, malicious speech and idle chatter. We, all, we try to have a kind speech to others. We give comfort speech to others instead of speaking harshly or malicious, dividing people to create disharmony and, uh, you, and uh, uh, this um, break up the unity of a community or a group of people. And the uh, mental side, covetousness, ill will and wrong views. Covetousness is out of greed. Oh, I see that, oh, you have big house. I wish that big house is mine. Oh, you have big nice car. I wish that the car is mine too. So that thought, the thought of greed, yeah, the ill will, wanting others to be harmed. Ah, I take revenge. I take revenge not through my physical because you've done something wrong to me and I hurt, I'm hurt. Okay, I want to revenge. So I wish the person yeah, uh, to be to be uh, very bad, nah? the, not by car. Sometimes you say, ah, sometimes you hear, ah, okay, uh, wish you are not by the car, la, you know, wish your family, uh, whole family, you know, um, died, la, you know, very bad um, curse, ah, eh? very bad curse. 
So that is our ill will. Sometimes it's due to revenge. Huh? You did something wrong to me. You hurt me. I don't like it. Out of anger already. Out of hatred already. Uh, then these wrong thoughts will appear. If we don't guard our mind properly, uh, then this type of wrong thought sometimes will crop up. So, but if we are mindful, we have been practicing uh, purifying our mind, then we will be mindful. Oh, no, this is a wrong thought. Then we can stop ourselves immediately and not to do it again. Yeah? So the moment is something not right come up, then we are aware. Yeah? The mindfulness helps us to be aware. And wrong views. Wrong views say, oh, no mother, no parents, uh, and uh, no karma. So I don't believe in karma. A person who doesn't believe in karma, they will do whatever that they want to do. Yeah? So that is very dangerous. That's why Buddha, Buddha advised not to have these uh, wrong thoughts uh, of covetousness, ill will, and wrong views. Yeah? Let's move on. Uh, this one is not included, but I just uh, briefly. Uh, so whatever we do out of a uh, great hatred and delusion, right? So patience also help us in terms of the hatred, especially when we have the hatred mind come out or sometimes people do something to me, to us, then the patience, the tolerance come in to help us to, um, you know, remind ourselves that Oh, this is this is um, wrong. Yeah, we don't have, no need to have these thoughts. Just have loving kindness. So patience actually help us a lot. For patience, forbearance, forgiveness, and tolerance. Yeah, this is very good virtues for our reminder for for our mindfulness also. Okay, so the next one is suwaja sattva, easy. To advise. Easy to advise. You look at this boy. The teacher is there. Two of them were listening. But look at his face. He just turned away. He didn't want to listen. So he is not advised. He, he is not easy to be advised. So even the teacher tell him, hey boy, this is not right. You need to write, huh? write it properly. Go it straight. Put your mind into it. But he didn't listen. So that is one, huh? that is one who, who is not easily to be advised, to be corrected. We are all, we are all human, so sometimes we do make mistakes. So, but if we have someone wiser than us, right, who knows the right, who, who are wise enough to uh, advise us, so it's good for us to listen. Oh, yeah, we reflect, we reflect, yeah. This is not right. Just now I said this. It's actually hurting to the other person. I shouldn't have said that. So first thing, I know I have done something wrong, right? My teacher advised us, advised me. Really. Then I, I recognize it. I accept it that this is wrong. And I can ask for forgiveness to the person. Sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, just now I said something not right. Now, I shouldn't have said that to hurt you. I shouldn't have said that. If I can, I pull, pull back the words. Yeah? I pull back the words. Of course cannot, but at least we, advise, we ask for forgiveness and more important, we don't do it again. So we, after that, we know we have the sense of hiri otapa. We know if we do that, then it is something wrong. So we have the moral shame and we, we also scared nah? moral dread that oh, if I do that, Something bad also, due to the karma, also it will be affecting us. Mm. Uh, and then, you can, um, a person who is easily to be corrected. So if learning, learning, if we can be corrected, then we can learn better. If we just stick to our own view, we might not know that what, whatever we do is correct. So when teacher tell us, right, in school also, uh, in school when we learn, so if teacher tell us, then we, uh, we get the advice. And that is also relating to learning also, yeah? yeah? Courtesy and gratitude in accepting advice. This is when someone, uh, when the someone wiser tell us, oh, this is not right if you do this, then ah, we 
have the we accept it and we have the the grateful heart to say oh okay luckily someone tell me if i mean the wiser one tell me or someone even a friend huh, a friend or family members huh, that tell me that this is wrong way to do it then at least i know if not i'll be continue to do it correct yeah so as children huh, Children, ah, yeah, they don't hear, they don't hear. Ah, hardly they do hear. Ah, so it's good that because they are experienced, they have the knowledge. So we listen to them also. Yeah, we get their advice also. In by listening also, we cultivate the hum, the sense of humility, the virtue of humility. So we are more humble, and uh, it also works. Together, if we are humble, then we are easily to get advice. If we are, we can easily be advisable. Then we slowly cultivate our humility, right? So it's coming hand in hand. Okay. Okay. So the next one is Samana Nancha Dasana, the sight of uh, Samanas. Why sight of Samanas so important? Uh, and it can lead to the lead to for uh, lead to meaningful life, living a meaningful life. You still remember before before the Buddha, before the prince uh, Prince Siddhartha became enlightened, he saw the four sides right that prompted him uh, so uh, so um, urgently wanted to be to wanted to seek for the truth, the four sides. So is. Old man, right? An old man, a sick man, a deaf man, and the fourth side, a samana, a holy man, a recluse, so calm, so peaceful. Even the sight of the recluse gives so much of uh, peacefulness, peace, so much of calmness, and uh, so much of uh, respect. It just automatically, automatically arise. So for us, sight of samanas help us to learn in what sense? Because when we see them, the samanas they are wiser people compared to us. Yeah, they are wiser people. They they are well learned for uh, from us, right? In terms of dharma, they practice longer than us. So the understanding of dharma, the knowledge of dharma, is so much vast. As compared to us, so they know more. So when we see them, automatically the sense of respect, yeah. Uh, when I see them, lah, when I see them, right, the sense of respect somehow it just automatically arise, and we have the urge to pay respect to them. We have to urge to offer them. Yeah, we all we have had the urge, right, to ask them questions to clear our doubts. To uh, get more knowledge from them, knowledge that we are lacking, we don't, we are not sure. And this is correct or not? Or we do this is correct or not? So we have someone who is wiser, who is more noble, uh, to advise. So that is for us to learn through learning from them. Yeah. So it involves mind, speech, and body in a harmonious synthesis. Because by looking at them already feeling so peaceful, and you have the sense of harmony. Okay, and if people, if um, you know, if uh, friends, uh, if friends all come together and pay visit and pay re uh, pay respect to them, the reverential salutation, the um, the asking asking for um, for knowledge, that is so joyful. The sight or the sight itself is also so joyful. Even though we are not there, okay, but we also can feel it. Yeah. So be, they are holy persons of purity, and real worth, and real worth. Desire to pay respects. So we have the desire to pay respects to them, deriving inspiration from their company. They are also human, just like the prince. Huh? Just like the prince when he became the Buddha, he was a human, just like us. So if he can be enlightened, um, this um, 
uh, respectable venerables, they can be, you know, they can be a, lib um, a liberator or they can be in a higher level. Okay, so we also have the potential. It's a matter of where we want to aspiration, uh, our noble aspiration, where we what we want to uh, aspire for. And leading one to discover for oneself spiritual treasures in due course. Our final course, uh, final goal, Nibbana. So it's a gradual path that leading to Nibbana. So by associating with them, uh, by learning from them, uh, they, we, we can be closer. Uh, we can be closer to the right course, uh, the course of uh, Nibbana. We, uh, Nalanda, since um, one week ago, yeah, we were very, very fortunate to host um, um, Venerable Aluka Wangsa and um, Sile Devi, Sile Mita Devi, yeah, Sile Mita Devi. So I can see quite a number of people come for dana offering, yeah, asking and that. And Bante, Bante Alofka Vangsa, every day, uh, every dana, he will give Dhamma talk. And his Dhamma talk is so, um, uh, I, would, I would say, is um, easy to understand, is one thing, and it's very joyful the way that he delivers it. And why he say Benefits of dana. Yeah, you come for dana, so he shared. So why we come for dana? So every day he will share with us different different story. Yeah, uh, maybe I share with you one story. Yeah, um, one day he shared on this story. He said that there there was one man. Yeah, one man. He always go for dana in a temple. Then one day, yeah, after dana, he also offered, he offered jasmine flowers, to. To, uh, to the stupa, because the stupa, stupa dwell the relics of the noble ones. So he also went to pay respect and offer the jasmine flowers. And he paid respect to the, and he, in his mind, uh, in his mind, he said, this jasmine flowers, I offered it to the deva of the lower realm, the hell realm. He offered it in that, in that sense. Then after that, he forgot already and uh, somehow he did something wrong. Uh, he did something very wrong and he, he was, uh, after death, he was uh, reborn in the hell, in the hell realm. You know, in realm, right, normally what we remember is, oh, that means you have, the person must have done something very, very bad, then only go there. Then this, this uh, deva of the hell realm asked him, okay, now you are here because you have done this, 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 this. Um, can you remember that you have done something good during your past life? Then he think, 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 say, no, la, I cannot remember anything, that anything good that I have done. Then the deva reminded him, you remember you offer the jasmine flowers at the stupa to offer it to the deva of the of the of the lower realm they say yeah 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 i remember then because of that goodness i mean this is from the story uh, given by the wood uh, by the uh, by bante is it because of that then the deva reduced his sentence in the in the lower realm and later on he was reborn, reborn to the human realm again yeah so this one of the stories uh, he said he 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 uh Bande shared many stories yeah okay why the story meaning it's encourages to do good yeah encourages to do good so by meeting with samanas the holy men uh, the monks bantes venerables it is encouragement inspiration for us to do good for us to do good and to remind ourselves also, this is uh, the spiritual treasures in due course is possible. The inspiration from there. Okay? And because of that, 
because of meeting with the um, Sangha members, a number of people, right? They, especially the young, they meet them. They also make the aspiration to go to the temple, at least to go through maybe three months or one year, just to go through and experience the life, experience the learning. Uh, one story to share. This is from uh, Luan Po Cha, Luan Po Cha's uh, sharing. He, he was uh, walking in the forest with another young monk. So as they were walking, walking in the forest, right? There was one, because after storm, so there was one big lock because of the storm and drop and blocked the way. So Luan Po Cha asked the young monk, he said, you hold this end, I will hold another end. So both of them carry up the lock. Then Luan Po Cha asked the young monk, is it heavy, difficult to carry? Then the young monk said, yeah, yeah, Luan Po is very heavy. Okay, so let, never mind, he said, we walk slowly to the side of it. And so they walk, 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 walk to the side, jungle area. Then he asked the young man, okay, now we can put down. So they slowly put down the big lock at the side uh, in the jungle area so that it doesn't block the way. Then now he asked the young man, how do you feel now? Is it lighter now or you, do you still feel the weight? Then he said, no, now there is no weight already because they have already put down the lock. The big lock is very heavy. No, he said, uh, Luan Po, no, now it's very light. No more, no more weight. Okay. So he said, it's just like us, he said. It's just like he's giving advice to the young monk, he said. It's just like us. If we have a lot of burden in us, a lot of kilesa in us, then that will have, they will give us the burden. So it's good to letting go. The moment you let go, just like you let go of the locks, then you feel joyful. You feel so light. Yeah? You, your burden is down. He said, likewise, he said, for us, if we have any, any unwholesome habits, uh, unwholesome habits, our thoughts, uh, just now uh, we have some thoughts there, eh, or we used to do something that is not, not good, let it down. Let go of it. Yeah? Get rid of it. We don't do it anymore. Then we will feel very light then we will feel joyful and happy. So that is the advantage yeah, of knowing the samanas, of getting to know the samana, getting to get their advice and learning from them. Yeah. Uh, so when we see them, we emulate the wise and the noble ones in their wholesome bodily conduct, verbal conduct and mental conduct. We observe the precepts and we learn to be humble patience and with integrity our conduct become blameless and people respect us when when we are when we are only when we ourselves are doing wholesome first thing first we will respect ourselves because why oh i'm good because i didn't do something bad i didn't do anything bad i don't kill i don't uh, speak uh, i don't simply steal or take people's thing. Um, I didn't uh, break people's uh, trust, right? So I have been doing good things. So first thing first, I respect myself. So because we respect ourselves, people see us that we are virtuous. Yeah? We are virtuous. So they will also respect us. Mm. So that is goodness. The goodness, right, will be, they will have the chain effect. Yeah. And we will influence the other party, uh, the friends uh, or, who, or our so associates. Uh, they will also be affected by us. So the chain effect will be good one. So if, um, <coughs> just like Chinese say, uh, if, you, um, go, if you go near to the bad elements of friends, then they will lead us to the bad way. And if you, um, and we are associating with good run, good friends, then we will be doing the good, good things. Uh, so, uh, bad one will bring us gambling, uh, give, bring us to uh, drinking, uh, all those uh, uh, funny, funny things. Uh. Okay. 
So we take them, we take the Sanghas as our teachers, guides, models to cultivate Sila Samadhi Panya, which is beneficial now and in the future. And when just now we chant the Sangha Nusati, now we say they are worthy of our offerings, hospitality, gifts, and reverential salutation. And it is an incomparable field of merits to the world. So by associating with them, we offering dana, uh, we learn from them the sila, we are actually doing good things for ourselves. No? We are accumulating our own merits. No? So they are the field of merits for the world. Okay, so the next one, we're talking about Kalina Dhamma Sakkacha. Timely discussion of the Dhamma. The earlier one, there is another phrase. <coughs> Kalena Dhamma Savanang, listening, timely listening to the Dhamma. Okay, so this one is timely discussion of the Dhamma. Because when we meet the noble ones, so we have the right time. Yeah, when we see them, we have the opportunity yeah, to have a discussion of the Dhamma with them. Okay. Discussion with the noble ones who have a thorough knowledge of the Dhamma. And they are the noble because <clears throat> By talk by uh, by um, liaising with them, by associating with them, we whatever we speak, whatever we speak, it is actually very noble. We don't we don't talk um, we don't speak of um, you know chattering, um, unbeneficial topics. Huh? We talk on dharma. Okay. Speaking of things tending to liberation. The right times for discussions with the intelligent, wise, and competent teacher. Oh, teacher, uh, uh, short of one H. Uh, is someone when, who is uh, depressed, restless, has doubts, and very important, the eagerness to learn. And that is the right time. Yeah, Eagerness to learn the Dharma. Okay. Listen to them when they give talks or when they give lectures or even listening on a CD, yeah? we are not there, but we are able to listen to it. Yeah? Okay, so when we, uh, okay, the, these are the, this is the last um, verse, Kalena Dhamma Sakacha, that I would like to share from the uh, Mangala Sutta. So, I just um, have um, some sharing in terms of when we learn, so how do we learn? What attitude <coughs> we should have? <coughs> Sorry, yeah. So first thing first, since we are talking about happiness and greed, hatred, delusion is the root for our, our, our suffering. <coughs> so important when we learn, right? The intention is to reduce our greed, hatred and delusion. <coughs> and uh, giving up. Renunciation. Renunciation, giving up, right? It's not just on material. Right? A lot of things that we can give up. Give up our material, give up our time. In this case, giving up time, meaning we give our time to others. Service. Uh, service at uh, here, we are talking about service at center. Those, um, we say thank you uh, to all the SMS service team. We are here early in the morning to set up all this place for us. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Opportunity for all of us to learn here. Renunciation of un very important unskillful habits. Unskillful habits maybe you can think of idle chattering, talking, uh, idle chattering that uh, sometimes is uh, when you think about it, it a lot of wasting our time and uh, energy. Because it can zap our energy. Oh, voila, this one, this one, um, a lot of gossiping, uh, a lot of gossiping. So it actually zap our energy and our time. Uh. So it also, in this case, right, when we, whatever we do, we have this attitude of kindness. Whatever we do, whatever I do, I do it with kindness. So from the observing the five precepts then we have the uh, we enabling the five ennoblers 
That means instead of killing, we save life. We have kindness. Uh, we have generosity. Uh, instead of um, in, instead of stealing, we give. Yeah. Um, and then we um, we joyful. We are joyful for others' success. We have mudita. Yeah. Kindness, compassion, and with this attitude, then the wisdom also will arise in us. And we'll be more mindful. As uh, just now I mentioned, we cultivate our, um, we practice our meditation, we cultivate our mindfulness, be at the present moment. Yeah? Meditation is not just the sitting. It's not just meditate during the sitting time. Actually, every day we have we have the opportunity to do mindfulness. Whatever we do, we just mindful. Oh, I am now giving this uh, sharing. Now, you now all of you are listening to the Buddha's um, sharing, uh, the Buddha, the Buddha's uh, sutta. Instead of the mind, go somewhere else. Afterwards, lunch. Where shall I have my lunch? Okay. Where shall, I, where shall I have my Father's Day lunch or Father's Day dinner, right? So we are here. So that is the mindfulness, yeah. And by doing so, we will cultivate wisdom as well. Yeah? Slowly, we discern what is right, what is wrong, uh, what is uh, correct things to do. Right? So no act, look at this, this little girl. She's so cute. When we look at it, we say, hey, she's so cute. She tried to uh, wipe off the tears of the man crying in the TV. Right? But looking at it, you think uh, that is out of kindness, out of compassion. Yeah, even little girls say, oh, please don't cry. Yeah? Um, even she didn't know, her, we don't, she didn't know him. Right? So no act of kindness. No matter how small is ever wasted. So even we uh, help someone, right? Um, pick up some rubbish instead of uh, just letting the worker do it. That is also a little act of kindness. Yeah. Okay. So a life of blessings. Since we are talking about blessings, uh, uh, living a life of blessings, right? So how do we count our blessing? This uh, Margo Vada say, those who make time for others are forever blessed. Make time for others, service, help others, okay? Um, give comfort words to others. That is blessed. We are blessed. So when we, um, <clears throat> when we serve, when we provide our service, when we give kind words to someone that is sad or sorrow, we are doing a little act of kindness. So during this gimana also, we emphasize a lot. Huh? Performing acts of kindness, generosity, and uh, compassion. Right? So little, little, we count our blessing. Last time, we used to have one small book. I'm not sure whether we still have or not. Last time, we used to have one book for us to write what blessings I have done, what good acts I have done today, and we write it down. It's not a matter of, oh, I, um, I praise myself uh, for the good work done, but it's for us to reflect. Yes, by doing this good uh, for others, I'm helping the person to regain back sometimes confidence. Sometimes, example, the person is so depressed, so depressed and so down. But by giving comfort words, by giving them some uh, gentle, gentle um, reflection to, for them, we are helping them. Sometimes we can pull them back from the verge of suicide. You know, so we, don't, we, don't, we do not underestimate the little, little acts. It can help others. The, the, there is this um, <clears throat> this uh, story, right? <clears throat> this 
I, I, think, I think some of you have heard before also, the Singapore, uh, I heard, I mean, I read before this story, this man, this man, he used to rob, he used to do a lot, a lot of bad things, okay? So he was always uh, in and out of the prison. He did very bad. Even the family members also give up on him already. So there was one time when he was uh, inside the prison. There is this, there is this man, I, either a man or lady, yeah. So he used to go to the prison to talk, to give Dharma talk, uh, to give Dharma talk, to give Dharma sharing to the prisoners, uh, in, for Chinese prisoners uh, in the prison. So when this man was inside, right, he actually did a one-to-one -one counseling, not, not so much a counseling, but uh, talking to him, uh, sharing with him, and uh, ask him, and guide him, and ask him why, why he did that, ask him, uh, you know, how come uh, so many years you are in here and you still want to come in by just doing all these, um, all these wrong acts. Then he shared his uh, story because of his friends. Uh, he mixed uh, with the uh, friends. So friends, right, sometimes, you know, say, hey, come on, let's go. Huh? The people, these people have, uh, you know, new cars, uh, just bought a new house. Sure, a lot of valuable things inside. So he mixed with these people and he always do that. And he was always, when he was caught, he was sent in. After finish his sentence, he came out again. And he continued to do it because of the friends. He came out already. Some of the friends still lucky, didn't caught, wasn't caught. So when he came out, they bring him back again to the same group and influence him to do all this. Even though he said, ah, enough already. Uh, so many years, even the parents also give up on him already. But this man didn't give up on him. He continued, continued, continued to give him advice, to guide him out of this darkness and give him the, the Dharma and let him see the, all these sufferings. And the sufferings is all his own acts. His own acts, his own action his own speech, his own thoughts. He do a lot of uh, stealing all this is out of greed, hatred, right? And um, the ignorance. So after, after a few years, and he finished his term, he was still inside, but throughout the period. So this man, every week will go in and talk to him, talk to him, talk to him. He didn't even, he not just saved this man, but this man was the most terrible one because he in and out so many times are uh, the worst one. So he helped him out. And guess what? End of the day, right? He became one of the policemen to help the, this, this um, bad people. Yeah, those uh, robbers, la, uh, those uh, killers, right? He end up become the counsellor for them. Right? So from the bad, right? Because of good advice. Good advice, but good learning also. He is willing to accept it. He realized, yeah, after talking, after listening, right, he realized his own mistake. And he is willing to correct. And that is important. He is um, advisable. Uh, he wanted to be corrected. So, end up, he came out. And the other way around, he helped the others. Those uh, robbers, uh, those killers, uh, who, those who kill and uh, was, uh, were put in the jail. So he ended up, he helped them and um, advised quite a lot of people to, uh, from change, transform them from the bad one to the good ones. Yeah. So little acts, few words, uh, words actually can help. So this is just a little sharing on this, uh, this kind man. Okay, so the, the life of blessings, right? Our life of blessings actually start from our own, our own speech, thoughts, and action. And when we cultivate the virtues of loving kindness, compassion, sympathetic joy, and equanimity, and we will have, the happy, we will have happiness. Happiness 
the source of all these blessings give us happiness. And, uh, and um, on top of that, of course, we need to have faith. We need to have faith. Uh, no doubt, the Buddha say no blind faith. Yeah, from the Kalama Sutta, no blind faith. Don't just follow what I say. Don't just follow what the people say or the tradition of say. Here say, yeah. But you have a little. We have a little bit of faith. We learn, we practice, and we realize. Yes, it's a fact. It's uh, helping me. That means this is true. That means this is workable. So our faith will increase with understanding. Faith with understanding will prompt us to continue, continue to learn, to continue to practice and have this conviction, conviction of, yes, I also can be one to, be, to have this happiness, to, have, to be liberated. Yeah. With faith, conviction and understanding. Yeah. So when we learn, we practice. Pariyati, Patipati, and Pativeda. For the Buddha, Buddha uh, for Dharma, first thing first, we need to learn. Pariyati. We learn from the Dharma books. We learn from our teachers. Uh, we learn by listening to the um, Sangha, to the teachers. So we learn first. We learn, we understand. And at the same time, right, we learn, we also practice. Pati pati, we practice. We practice according to the Dharma. Right? So that is also our principle of living also. Huh? The, one of the four principles of living. Right? We learn, we practice, and Pati Veda. Pati Veda, realization. Yeah. We, it's through these three steps. We learn, we practice, then only can be realize it it will not be just come to us it is a matter of different people have different level of understanding and different level of our um, our past inclination uh, our inclination so from there some can be faster some maybe slower a bit some uh, you know um, uh, learn faster so the other day the other day at uh, wisdom park yeah at wisdom park Bikuni, Mita Devi also shared. He said there are four types of people. He said, first type of people, when they listen to the Dharma, okay, wow, they can get the understanding very fast. The second type of people, they listen a little bit of understanding. The fourth type of people, they listen, they don't understand at all. Can, cannot understand. And the fourth type of people, not even interested to know at all. Yeah, so these are the four types of people. So like for us, right? Um, first, um, a lot of us, uh, a, lot, a lot here will be the first one. Listen, listen or, or read uh, or study, and you can understand. And then you practice. Second, uh, slowly, you listen, understand a little bit. But we put in our effort. Yeah, more diligent. So by doing that also, we can increase yeah, our understanding. So the third type, right, totally cannot understand. Or fourth one is worse, not interested at all. Yeah. So hopefully we are first and second. Uh, okay. If third also, never mind. So push ourselves up higher. Yeah. From, uh, from uh, fourth, go up to third. Third to second, second to the first. Okay, so good friends, good teachers. It's important, yeah, I shared before also, good friends are important for us, good teachers. Friends can be our teachers. Sangha members are our teachers. Okay, so the wiser ones are our teachers, noble ones, yeah. So we are together, we learn from each other and we nudge each other. Hey, this is not, uh, no, um, not mindful. Huh? We need to be mindful. We don't say this to hurt others. Oh, oh, this is not the correct way to do it. Okay, we learn, but we are more, we are easily to advise. Yeah, we are easily. Then only we can learn. Okay. 
So this is to have life of blessings. It all starts with us to do, yeah, to do step by step. It is step by step, and it's not, oh, to tomorrow I do it. It is now. Uh, everything is from now. Uh, from now. Now I can do. We can do a little bit acts of kindness. Yeah, or just uh, by encouraging our friends, say some good words. That is good. Yeah. So it's good. Uh, it is important to associate with good friends. Yeah, and service. Service. Put ourselves. Not say put ourselves down. It's put. We put ourselves down by being being humble. And being kind and compassion, if we see someone carrying heavy heavy loads, so we offer ourselves, "Can I help you?" So we release the load of the other party. So that is also an act of kindness and compassion. Yeah, little 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 by little, tokang tokang kane kane ya. Little by little, right? Then we can improve, increase our kindness. The moment it becomes our nature, yeah, slowly it becomes our nature. So automatically, this kindness will just come. It's just like just now the mother Mangala or even Mother Teresa, their compassion. So it's just built up through years, slowly, slowly, slowly. So all of us also can do it. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So those who make time for others are forever blessed. So that is the life of blessings. Okay, so may we aspire to live a meaningful life for ourselves and other beings as well. Yeah. So my talk will be until today.